Welcome back to another Mac Tech Tech. Today we have our first of four upgrade guides featuring Deep Clue C for Murders at Karloff Manor. This deck focuses on creating clues, drawing extra cards with those clues to give us card advantage, token creatures, and boosting our commander a little bit as a bonus. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. You might even earn yourself a little shout out in a future video, like Ernie Elizondo is getting today. Ernie, you rock. So as per usual, we'll be swapping out 10 cards while leaving the land base untouched. We're also going to aim to keep the upgrade guide relatively budget friendly, though we're going to mention a few costly cards as bonuses at the end. With that being said, let's take a look at the cards that didn't quite make the cut. Starting off our list, we have Confirmed Suspicion. It's the only counterspell that came in the deck, it gives us 3 clues as a bonus, but 5 mana feels like a lot to hold up just to counter a single spell. The 3 clues are nice, but we have a lot of ways to generate clues already built in, and I think we can afford to lose this one. Following that counter, we have Essex Fractal Bloom. Essex is expensive to get out at 6 mana for a flying 4-4, and although it works well with our clue token generation, Enough of our key creatures that we want to, you know, replace the clues with are legendary, and so it just really won't work in our favor. And the remaining ones just aren't really strong enough in my mind to seal that deal. So, Essex, you gotta go. After the replacement effect, we have Fumigate. This deck started off with three board wipes, and it's token focused. So we really are trying to go wide ourselves. With go wide strategies, I don't tend to want to run board wipes. And I think we can afford to lose one of them as a result. Graph Mole is up next and lets us gain life for sacrificing clues. An interesting effect to be sure, but one that I'm not sure we care about. Life is a resource, but not one that we're personally spending to sling our spells or activate our abilities. We're going to have plenty of chump blockers to avoid damage from combat, so life gain, while nice, isn't as strong as we'd like it to be in this deck. Hornet Queen follows up the mole and would normally put us in a nice, like, death touchy wall situation, deterring our opponents from coming at us. Which could be a sound strategy, but one that I don't think we really need to rely on. Unless our opponent's creatures have trample, attacks against our wall of chump blockers just isn't very efficient, and they'll be looking to take us out in other ways. Magnifying Glass is an expensive mana rock that lets us investigate for 5 mana. 4 to activate the ability, and 1 from the loss of not being able to use the magnifying glass to generate that colorless mana in the first place. So I think it's really expensive just to be able to investigate that way, so it's cut. Ongoing investigation could allow us to generate a few clues each turn, but we have tons of ways of already doing that, and it was an easy enough cut to make. Ransom Note is really versatile. Uh, it's a clue, which is also nice. It's one mana, but ultimately still felt a little too weak to keep. Serene Sleuth cares about goaded creatures that we control and relies too heavily on the actions of our opponents to be of real use here. Less up for cards that didn't make the cut is Wave Sifter, which is looking to be evoked to give us two clues, but again, the juice of two clues isn't worth that squeeze. We can find stronger cards that push us further ahead. With those 10 cards out, what cards are we putting in to replace them? Well, we're starting off with Thorough Investigation to introduce a dungeon mechanic to our plan, allowing us to get extra value that has impact from sacrificing all these clues that we're making. Following up our investigation, we're stumbling across a Smuggler's Share. Odds are high that we're going to see our opponents drawing extra cards, playing extra lands, and we deserve a share in that bounty. Timio's Journal is up next and fits the theme well. It'll produce extra clues, let us sack three clues at a time to tutor up any card we want. It's just good value. Senator Peacock turns all of our artifacts into clues, but more importantly allows us to make creatures unblockable when we sack our clues. Which makes our commander, who's already getting pumped up by every clue we sack, even more deadly. Min, Wily Illusionist, follows up the Senator to add to our token army. The illusions they create are going to let us hit hard and cheat out expensive spells. Martha Jones is Senator Peacock at home. They're going to let us investigate when they ETB. And when we sack clues, they and another target creature become unblockable for the turn. 
Kellen, Inquisitive Prodigy, is going to help us ramp early and then come back as a 3-4 that can destroy artifacts. And if we happen to destroy one of our own, such as our clues, we get to draw a card anyway. Jahira, Friend of the Forest, turns all of our clues into mana rocks, as well as any of our other tokens that we control. We're going to have a ton of mana at our disposal, allowing us to sling spells that our hand is full of. Forensic Gadgeteer allows us to investigate when we cast an artifact spell, but more importantly, it's going to lower the cost to stack those clues down to one. So we're going to be sacking extra clues all the time, drawing extra cards, keeping our hand nice and full. Last up, and the golden nightmare of the deck, Cyber Drive Awakener. For six mana and a board full of clues, we're going to have a ton of flying 4-4 creatures ready to swing out and end the game out of nowhere. Our opponents won't see it coming. They'll see like, oh, you got some creatures, you got a lot of clues, but whatever, whatever. And then all of a sudden, bam! Oh, my like 20 clues are actually 24-4 flying creatures. I win? Those are the upgrades I'd start out with, but of course we have some bonus cards that are a little more expensive or just didn't quite make the cut but are still worth considering if you have them on hand or just have the money to pick them up. Esper Sentinel is a little tax on our opponents that if not paid is going to give us even more card advantage. Mondrak Glory Dominus is a token doubler. While well, Ogre Tack, Deepest Foundation, is a token tripler. Urza, High Lord Artificer, is going to create us a construct that is going to have a ton of power and allows all of our clues to also act as mana rocks. Follows Maneuver can protect us from a board wipe, right alongside Teferi's Protection, which is here for the same purpose. Officious Interrogation is a great way to stock up on more clues. Thousand Moon Smithy creates a powerful token creature, and it's easy enough for us to have it transform into Barracks of the Thousand, a nice mana rock that we could use to create more of those powerful creature tokens. Last up, we have four powerful enchantments in the form of Doubling Season, and Parallel Lives to increase our token production. Ristic Study to keep our card draw flowing nicely. And Smothering Tithe to keep our mana nice and full to cast some big spells. But guys, that's the guide. Do you agree with the changes I made? Were there cards that I cut that you think I'm overlooking? Cards that I added that you don't think synergize well? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see the entire deck list, there is a link to it in the description, as well as a link to join our Discord, where we will, you know, be slinging spells, talking about magic, just starting out in general. But until next time, good luck with your builds.